Hey, how's it going? This is Mr. Hernandez, and I'm going to be going over this describing the cube root function using this link here. If you click that link, you will be taken to this um, equation here, this uh, cube root function, which looks like a cubic function, just uh, it's kind of reflected, but we'll learn about that next uh, unit. But if you click it anywhere, you will see these gray dots appear. Um, you see them? They're right there on the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So those are really important. Um, but also just, you know, check out the table. Um, if you click this um, this gear symbol, which is, let me show you here. And by the way, this is going to be a long video. So just, you know, um, fast forward if you just want to check, you know, something particular. But if you click that gear symbol, that's how you get to... Um, this next table feature that I want to show you. Um, you could um, duplicate it or make that a table and uh, you're going to get some good points of there. Uh, these ones that have whole numbers are, you know, really good. You also have that X intercept. So I'm going to, I'm going to use those points to, to graph. Okay. So, um, the first thing that we're going to do is copy down the actual, so it's the cube root of x plus 1. And then you got the minus 2. So again, this is the radicand, and this is outside of the radical. Um, this is a radicand. It's not a square root anymore. So um, this is a radical um, with the index of 3. That's what the 3 is right there, the index. So this is a... Um, cube root uh, let's graph this thing so you got negative 2 negative 3 2 left 3 down uh, let's see negative 1 negative 2 1 left 2 down okay 0 negative 1 and then the other numbers are like decimals so I might not use it if you if you click enter, you'll get other numbers, but yeah, there's no other whole numbers besides that seven. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna approximate on this graph. I'm just gonna put a dot at seven. And then you have your general, you know, cubic, cube root shape here. Okay, arrows in both directions. Okay, so the domain uh, is how far left and how far right. Well, the arrow left and arrow right indicate that it is infinity in both directions, but going left, it is that that's going to be negative infinity. So it goes left forever, right forever. Uh, believe it or not, this um, this function actually goes up and down forever. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's looks like it's going flat, but it's actually, look at the y value, it's going up, up and up and up, not very fast, but it's going up for sure. Um, yep. And going left, same thing. You can see the x, it's negative 10. I mean, it'll go to negative 11 and so on. So yeah, this is definitely going to be going up and down forever as well. So that's the range. Negative infinity is down forever. Positive infinity is up forever. Okay, solution and x-intercept. Well, remember, these are the same. The x-intercept was this one here, 7, 0. Since the x-axis goes across horizontally, this is where the graph crosses that um, horizontal axis. And solutions, well, you just write the same thing. It's just x equals 7. The y-intercept we put here at negative 1, so that's going to be um, 0, negative 1. Okay, so when you have these types of other questions, this is saying f of x is greater than 0. And that just means um, greater than 0 is above the x-axis. So where is this graph above the x-axis? And... So here's the x-axis right here. All this is below. So actually right here at the x-intercept, that's where it starts to go above the x-axis. So if I label it, it's all, you know, it's going to be all up here. It's going to go up and right. 
So it's going to be right at 7. 7 is the point where it starts to go above the x-axis. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make that 7 to infinity. Going to the right. Um, this other one is uh, below. And, um, and again, we're going to look at the x values for where it's below. So left of 7 to infinity is, is uh, where this graph is below the x-axis. So, um, so of course, we got to put the smaller number first. So the negative infinity is left forever. And 7 is the, is the highest value where this graph is below. Not including 7, though, right? It's not a square bracket because it's not under the x-axis at 7. So that's why I'm putting the round parenthesis with this interval notation. Okay, increasing. Um, increasing means going up from left to right. So if I'm going left to right, it's going up the entire way. So um, where it's increasing is going to be left forever and right forever, this entire graph. You could even say all real numbers, but that just means, you know, same thing. Is it increasing faster at a certain place than another? I think so. Um, when you look at this kind of steep, it's steeper here versus here, it's more flat, right? So maybe right here when x is negative 1, it's going up faster than when x is 7. It's not going up that fast. Um, so I'll put those. Decreasing, it's not decreasing. So I'll put not applicable. Constant, that just means it's a, a horizontal line straight across like that, which does not exist here. Uh, maxima and minima, well, there's no like a maximum. Maxima is like up and down, up and down. Um, you know, these are these are max, but there's none here. And minimums are down here. There's, there's none here either. Um, so these are all, you know, I'll just put lines here. So there's none of that. And then, uh, let's see here. Continuous. So continuous, the opposite of continuous is discrete. Discrete are dotted lines or a broken up type of graph. But this graph is not broken up or dotted. So it's not discrete. It is continuous. Um, okay. The other one is periodic. So we were looking at the sine wave and cosine wave before. Periodic is like a cycle, just continues over and over and over. But uh, this this graph is not going to continue. You know, this shape it's just going to go up and right, down and left forever. It's not going to cycle. You know, up and down. So it is not periodic. Nope. There's no asymptotes that that exists for um, these types of. You know, rational functions um, where you have a vertical and horizontal asymptote. You also can have an asymptote with an exponential function where it starts off really slow and then it skyrockets. So that'll have a, a horizontal asymptote here. So yeah, this does not have an asymptote. So I'm going to put none. And then uh, let's see what else here. Okay, so end behavior, this is just saying um, as x values get really big, that means positive x values, which is to the right. What is the f of x doing? What is the y value doing? So as you go to the right, it's, it's, is it going up or down? It's going up. So the y value is increasing. And then um, this last one, as x gets really small, that means the x value is negative, which means it's going to the left. So as you go to the left, what's the y value doing? What's the f of x doing? Uh, well, it's going down. So um, that's going to be decreases. And uh, I guess the interesting fact here, I mean, is uh, that it's the inverse of a cubic function. It has the same shape as a cubic, but it's just, uh, you know, transformed a little bit because the cubic would be uh, going more like down up through here and then up, you know. But this is looking uh, kind of similar to it, but uh, yeah, it's just transformed. 
Okay, well, I hope you did. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you to check your work. And uh, yeah, have a good one.